We are about to begin the services for Mrs. Rhonda Lerner. I would ask if any of you have a cellular device to please turn it to the off position. Officiating our service today will be Rabbi Nancy Landsman. It is truly an honor, a great honor, to be officiating the service today for Rhonda, somebody that I never had the privilege, and it would have been a great privilege to have known her. I'm so grateful to Bob and Holly taking the time to share so many wonderful stories and memories of her, painting a picture as I requested that they do of her life, a life that was truly well lived, just not long enough. Our hearts certainly go out to Bob and to Holly and to the rest of the family. It means so much that you're here to lend your love and your support on this very difficult day. We begin the service with the traditional act of Kriya. Many times direct mourners will either make a tear in their clothing or in lieu of that, both Holly and, and Bob have been given a black Kriya ribbon that's been pinned on you. If the two of you could just stand up right at your place, in a moment, I'm going to ask that you make a tear in the ribbon to symbolize how your hearts are torn. We know everyone's hearts are torn as we say goodbye to Rhonda, but especially the two of you. There are traditional Hebrew words that are said before making a tear in this ribbon, and I invite the two of you to repeat these words after me. Baruch, Ata, Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech, Ha'olam, Dayan, Ha'emet. These words mean, praised are you, eternal our God, ruler of the universe, judge of truth. From the bottom of the ribbon up towards the circular button, you can go ahead and make a little tear or tear it all the way up, as far up as you would like. Sometimes the ribbons tear very easily and sometimes not so. You have a choice to wear this torn Kriya ribbon just today, or the first week of mourning, or the period of Shloshim, 30 days. You also have a choice to wear the ribbon tucked in the inside or on the outside. If you choose to wear the ribbon on the outside and you go out and about, people see you wearing this torn ribbon, hopefully they will understand that you are in a period of mourning and they'll have compassion on you. Please be seated. We measure lives not in time, but in grace, in the joy with which they lived, and in the love which they leave behind. The author of the following is unknown. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. It's filled with moments sweet and sad with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared, and laughter through the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. In learning about Rhonda, I have selected just a few readings 
that I felt were fitting and appropriate for her. And this next poem by Linda Ellis truly resonated with me, and I hope it does with you as well. I read of a man who stood to speak at a, the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came her date of birth and spoke the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you'd like to change? For you never know how much time is left. That can still be rearranged. If we could just slow down enough to consider what's true and real and always try to understand the way other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Today is a difficult day for all who knew and loved Rhonda. We often find comfort when we turn to the book of Psalms. Psalm 121. Esahina. I will lift up mine eyes unto the mountains. From whence shall my help come? My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel doth neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall keep thee from all evil. He shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall guard thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forever. In your service folders, you find the 23rd Psalm, a Psalm that I think speaks to all of us, regardless of our faith. And so I'd like to invite all of you to join with me in reciting 
the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The author of the following is unknown. The poem is entitled, To My Sister. I am blessed to call you sister. I also call you my friend. You've loved me unconditionally and stood through thick and thin. You've shared my joys and sorrows, my laughter and my tears. You've been my inspiration as we grew up through the years. When we were little children, we laughed and played together. Then growing up, you stood by me through good and stormy weather. There's something God has given us that's more than family. He's placed a love for you, my sister, deep down in the heart of me. It's very clear to me, Holly, when you, Bob, and I met, how much you adored your sister. Not all sisters have that kind of bond, and you know that. You were blessed, and Rhonda was blessed. And I know you and one other person, we have two speakers today, and you have some beautiful words, heartfelt words that you'd like to share, so I'd like to invite you up to share those words. Rhonda was many things to many people, a soulmate, a lover, a devoted wife, a best friend, a mother figure, and a loyal friend. She would do anything for anyone at any time. She was kind and generous to a fault. As my cousin Steve always said, everyone should have a cousin Rhonda. Well, I was the lucky one. I had the ultimate honor of being her sister, best friend, and having her as my cherished mother figure. She will be dearly missed by all. She is dancing in heaven, as, as Mick, Jagger, Mick Jagger sang, time waits for no one. And now it's my honor to call Rhonda's dear friend, Bob Shipley, to come forward. How does one, how do I, adequately describe 54 plus years of enduring friendship. For me, those words are deep and enduring. A relationship which was 
very special and very unique to both of us. From the day we met across the candy counter which separated Turnstile and Jewel, Rhonda a cashier and me a bag boy, we instantly connected. Thank you, Marla Cooper. A connection as strong today as when we met. It mattered not whether it had been a day or many days since we last spoke. When we did, it was always as if we spoke the day before. Rhonda was always there for me. We shared countless experiences, some which have been documented and many which have not. Once Rhonda and Bob connected, the adventures, good times, and friendship has continued. So many precious photographs preserving for posterity, fun times, and important moments. We've seen the montage, we see the photos. Bob, among these, you know, for myself, were photos from the first trip that I took with you guys to Maui. Some parties that we attended, New Year's Eve. Your wedding after party, best ever. And, and, and just hanging out. Although never hesitant to bluntly share her thoughts and opinions, Rhonda was in my corner, and knowing that I had her unconditional support and honesty was always important. We last spoke in early June, around Father's Day weekend, after one of the earlier procedures that she had endured. Rhonda was in the hospital, but despite some discomfort at the time, we had a great conversation. In my view, she was herself. The conversation only ended because a doctor came into the room and unfortunately had to go about his business. I remember being heartened by how she sounded and how optimistic I was that she would be home soon. In the ensuing months, Rhonda was always top of mind, and Nance and I tried to be present for Bob and Holly in any way that we could. Rhonda had a bright smile, an infectious laugh, an excellent baker, best mandel bread ever. Successful in business, Rhonda ran her own stationary business, which I always called the tchotchke business, for over 30 years. Rhonda was a fiercely loyal friend, an aunt and mentor to many children and young adults. It always warmed my heart how Nancy and her bonded, making their own connection at that first dinner 16 years ago and developing their own deep friendship. A music lover, Rhonda was passionate about her Rolling Stones <laughs> and many other bands. Her passion for music extended to cover bands, including the cover band Tributosaurus, and Nancy and I loved surprising her at our wedding when she was astonished to hear and see they were our wedding band. Astonishment and surprise that we have forever captured on video for posterity. Rhonda fought long and hard. Bob and Holly, a constant presence. Saying goodbye is always terribly hard. Harder when saying goodbye to a lifelong friend with whom I've had such a special bond. In, in these moments, I return to what I believe are comforting thoughts in tough times. Our memories protect and cherish those who are near and dear to our hearts. I will miss Rhonda, but thoughts of her and the shared memories will always be present. And now I have the honor of sharing a few additional memories that I learned about Rhonda, some of which you may know. I asked Bob, so how did you guys meet? I love this story. So he says, well, you know, first I dated all of her roommates in college. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, but we didn't meet in, we both went to the University of Illinois, we didn't meet there, it was after, uh, you're a year older, right? So 
it was after she graduated. When things are meant to be, we call this beshert, the Yiddish word meaning meant to be. Your jobs were basically across the street from each other and you reconnected. So you met and it was meant to be. You guys, I understand, were pretty much adjoined at the hip. You loved being together. It didn't matter what the two of you were doing. So you first had this friendship, and then it grew and blossomed. And for 40 years, you and Rhonda drank from the cup of life. She wasn't just a sister. Holly, you said, and you said it today as well, she was like a mother figure to you. She was that best older sister, not every sibling, think about your siblings if you have them, would invite you to hang out with her friends, and, well, and you can bring your friends too, right? So she just opened her arms, opened her heart. She included you, she wanted you to be there with her. There were so many adjectives that were used by Holly and Bob in our meeting, and in no particular order, some of which we've already heard, but worth repeating to think about how Rhonda was so caring, generous, fun, loyal, meticulous, social, brave, selfless, devoted, and loving. She enjoyed keeping her mind active, and she did so by often doing crossword puzzles and Sudoku. She loved the rock and roll music, as we heard, and, and I love how Bob said, you know, she would have loved to have been married to Mick Jagger. You know, had she not met you, she would have been married to him. <laughs> he would have been real lucky, too. You were lucky. She loved to travel, and Maui was her happy place. And you guys got to go to Maui often, but there were also memories you shared of going to Mexico and going to, on cruises to the Caribbean. And it just, whether you went out to eat, whether you went to see a movie or listened to live music, or just sat at home being together, you loved being together. If you were lucky enough to be her friend, you were really lucky. She was a loyal friend. And I understand that there's this large group of friends, and she was like the social director. She was really good at planning all these outings and trips and travels and things that you guys got to do. How fun is that? She was great at being the life of the party and she loved to dance, and she always had a smile on her face. Her, her smile just lit up the room. She was a huge White Sox fan, and she was also a, a Bears fan back in the day when they finally won the Super Bowl, and you guys had the Super Bowl party, right? It was fun, so fun. She liked hosting Thanksgiving family gatherings. Now, if, and if you've ever been a host, then you know, you know it's stressful to get all the food out, especially when it's supposed to be hot, out on the table all at the same time. And she would be, I'm quoting Bob, a mad woman, trying to make sure that everything was put out on the table, everything be hot, everything delicious. And I understand last Thanksgiving, her turkey was the best, the best. She didn't like turkey, but she made a good turkey. <laughs> Not everybody likes turkey. But her favorite holiday was the 4th of July. Holly, you shared how on the 3rd of July, you guys would go to Grand Park, a whole group of you, but you guys, you and Rhonda would set out the blankets and right, a group of people would go and you listen to the music, you see the fireworks. How fun. That was her favorite. She also was a big fan of MSNBC, watching Rachel Maddox, of course. And she was someone who just 
was there for you. If you needed her, she would be there. She was someone who had a zest for life. You think about it. None of us know when our time will come. So we have to be grateful for the time that you did get to share with Rhonda. Bob, especially this meaningful trip that you and Rhonda recently got to take to the Dominican Republic in honor of your 70th birthday and yours and Rhonda's 40th wedding anniversary. I encourage all of you to remember Rhonda's generous spirit, how she always put you before herself. She did this even to the very end. Holly, you shared with me that your sister cared so much about still always being there for you, that she held on longer than the doctors thought that she would, so that her death occurred actually on your birthday, so that you will always remember that she's there with you even on your birthday. That's who Rhonda was, caring, thoughtful, loyal, selfless. How blessed you have all been to have had this incredible woman in your life. And how blessed she was to have had the love and support from her husband, her sister, her relatives, and all her wonderful friends. Cherish your memories of Rhonda, and may they be a source of comfort to you, especially in the weeks and months ahead. Zecher Tzadik Livracha, the memory of the righteous is forever a blessing. And to that we say, Amen. Mike Miller wrote, come gather here, be at your ease to say this last goodbye, not to this shell before you, but to a life passed by. I lie wrapped in a tapestry, stitched with every memory that we have shared together through calm and stormy weather by each other's side. I do not ask you for your tears, for I am free, my suffering past. Remember all the times we laughed, and when you find that happy place, let a smile light up your face. We forged our bond with love, not tears. Linking arms, we walked as one. Now is my turn to rest a while. I have reached the final style, but you must carry on. Goodbye to you with whom I've shared this wondrous gift of life. Enjoy the dance, life's sweet refrain, for love is timeless as the stars, and I will dance with you again. I invite you to turn to your service folders once again underneath the 23rd Psalm. We find our final prayer here in the chapel. And if you are planning to join us at the cemetery, you want to make sure you take your service folders with you is because we will be reciting what's on the back cover. The final prayer there is the mourner's Kaddish. So it is customary to rise for El Male Rachamim, if you are able to rise, please do so. Yes. 
We say together, O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament unto the soul of Rhonda Lerner, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, Bring her under the cover of thy wings and let her soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession and may her repose be peace. Amen. Please be seated. Our service here in the chapel is concluded. The interment will take place immediately at the family plots at Shalom Memorial Park in Arlington Heights. Following the interment at 2.30, the family will be having a condolence luncheon at Jameson's Char House, 1331 West Dundee Road in Arlington Heights. That's again at 2.30 p.m. Please note for those of you who are online, that information is available online, and for those of you who are present on your folder, the address is noted. Please also note that the family has asked that memorial contributions be made to the World Central Kitchen, uh, that's 200 Massachusetts Avenue, Northwest, seventh floor, Washington, D.C., that's specifically earmarked for Hawaii, uh, Maui uh, relief from the wildfires. Those of you who are going in procession with us today, please make sure that you obtain an orange funeral safety sticker. The sticker should be placed in the front passenger side window of your vehicle. We would also ask that you have your bright headlights and hazard lights on at all times. For an additional measure of safety throughout the procession, the staff will place flags on the top of vehicles. As we drive in the procession today, I would please ask you to limit your utilization of your cellular device. Also ask you to please stay as close to the vehicle in front of you as possible. This is especially important as we go through intersections. We don't want anyone to uh, enter if at all possible. I'm going to, in just a moment, I'm gonna ask everyone to please rise. I'm gonna invite those of you who are asked to be pallbearers to step forward and we'll escort Rhonda the family and the clergy from the chapel, please. 